little more lead in. Hi, I'm Tom Lynch here at Art Academy Live. Well, I'm not actually at Art Academy Live. I'm in the studio and that's a new segment that I'm going to create for you to see your artists in the studio. I'm going to travel around to some of my artist friends and share what it's like in their studio. So I'm starting off with my in the studio segment. Well, I'm not actually in the studio. I'm in the office right next to my studio and that's one of the things that I want to share with you. Now this is going to be very informal. We're not going to clean up the set, but I want to inspire you, maybe encourage you to just set up an arrangement that might help you be more creative and have your creativity be more successful. So that's the master plan. Now, a thing that works well for me is to have the office activity separate from the studio. So you're actually sitting in my studio looking at me and I'm in the office area right next to the studio. And this is where I take care of all the details, all the letter writing and the correspondence. And that is a place that makes me just think about business work. I don't have any business thoughts when I'm in the studio area. And maybe an idea like that might help you. Some of my artist friends, they set aside a certain day just to do office work. For me, it's an hour after I've done painting all that day and then I'll take care of some details so I'm not worrying about it later on. Now for me, pick a space that's nice and interesting, you know, warm, well-lit, inviting, com convenient of course is, you know, right next to the studio area. And it's in my home. That's one of the benefits of working in my home. I have a chance to be inspired, to take care of that inspiration right away. Step in the studio for a couple minutes, finish up that sketch, or even finish a letter. So now you've got a little idea of what my office area is like, so I'll switch positions with you. I'll be in the studio and I'll let you sit here at my desk and I'll share what it's like in the studio. Be right back. Well, I didn't actually make it to the studio yet because I thought of another idea that I want to share with you. Find a place where you can have an easel and set a painting up and then take a look at that painting frequently when you're walking by quickly later in the day. So what I have in my office is an easel and I have a painting set up in the easel. It's a painting that's in progress and I'm not quite sure if I'm finished and that's the idea. I'll take a quick look at it each day just for a minute or two or while I was sitting at my desk and then I'll decide do I want to increase the light, do I want to soften an edge, minimize the contrast at the edges, whatever. If you can have a frame or a mat around the image that will give you a look of a more refined and that may be always needed just to see it in its presentation format. So there's another idea for you already before I've made it to the studio. Have an easel where you can put a working painting up on display and maybe you'll find an idea to do before you overwork it. Okay, now I'll head in the studio and share what it's like in my studio. Okay, well I'm finally in the studio and there's a couple of things that I wanted to share with you that might help you if you are set up a studio or if you just have a spare bedroom. For me it's comfort, convenience, lighting and a view. Okay, let's start with comfort. I like a tall chair. I like to be almost, you know, at the point where I'm standing up working on a painting. You know, and that same idea, that view from a distance is an important part for me. Maybe it would be something for you to try once in a while. I like painting from the arm's length. So I've got a tall table, tall chair, and an extra cushion on the chair. Lighting, let's talk about lighting. An important element in the, uh, I think, the development of the painting, even though I have beautiful north light, and also I have shaded west light. So those parts an important part. I have auxiliary lighting. So here's Verilux lighting. It's a color corrected light bulb. I have the same thing in a couple of the fixtures overhead. A couple of the can fixtures. That Verilux light gives me more of a white light instead of the yellow. So there's no fluorescent lights in here. They can be hard on the eyes and it can change the color of what you see. Let's talk about some of the other things around me. Uh, reference material. I'm a big one for having a lot of reference material. So I have a lot of books, you know, picture books that you might get when you go on vacation. I take a lot of slides, or at least I used to take a lot of slides, and I have a lot of photographs. Now, I catalog all those photographs. So I have a drawer for anything. So I have a drawer for Chicago scenes, a drawer for clouds. And so as I'm developing a painting and the reference that I have to start with doesn't have a very interesting cloud format, I can go into that cloud format that is in a drawer. Now, 
at the time now I'm doing a lot of digital photography and I'm transferring those images to my computer and so I have a computer a little laptop close by and I can flip it open go to a folder that has clouds eventually I'll have these changed into a digital format as well so I'm building a painting so I have a lot of extra art supplies all around me at the same time as well. So I've got a drawer, you know, full of, you know, lots of different sponges, you know, different formats. And that's where the convenience factor. So I can reach over and grab a thing. Obviously, I've got a ton of spray bottles and so forth. You know, extra paint. And so that I'm encouraged to just do an extra squeeze at the same time. We talked about the lighting. I've got a television. You know, I've got, I don't really watch TV that much, but it, it makes me feel like someone's around here with me. At the same time, I have a stereo system. System so I can throw on some music and for me music makes a difference if I'm putting on a big dramatic shadow I have some pretty loud music and some pretty rocking music if I'm laying in a soft little uh, meadow or so forth and I even change the music in that particular format I have an easel where I can look at a painting you know that I have uh, uh, that is similar to and the same thing it's one of the other aspects that I do with my books I have a lot of artist books as well and I might open up a book and I'm doing an awning now but I I might look at someone else's you know painting of an apple or a still life and get an idea for color so a lot of my books are dirty from paint because they've been sitting you know on the table around me that's why I designed a book that would set up and stand up so I could look at artwork while I'm creating artwork I don't look at photographs even when I had the slides what I would take and do the beauty of a slide is that I could turn the image around same thing you can do on your laptop you can invert the image and so I would have a piece of white paper and then I would take and tape this particular image up and so I could look at this image and the beauty of a slide it's not real large so I'm not looking at a lot of detail I'm just looking at some of the shapes of the objects that I'm about to paint so that's an important part of it as well. So hopefully a couple of those things might have given you a little bit of an idea. I'm working on canvas paintings mostly now. And for me, I have a new system, a friend of mine that helped me develop where I have a canvas on a roll so I can do some very tall and very large paintings. So I still need to work on a table flat. So with this roller system, I'll work on the bottom third of the painting and then I'll roll it up here. I'll work on the middle third. As long as I have a good preliminary sketch, I can develop different parts of the painting and then later I'll put it all together, set it up on an easel and work with it. I have an opaque projector nearby. Now and then when I spent all this time developing my sketch, I could put this in the opaque projector, project it down and just get the rough layout so I have the same proportions. That's one of the things that I wanted to you know, share with you in the studio. So remember the idea was lighting, comfort, accessibility, and a view. I think I'll take you on a tour. I'll put you in this seat and I'll take you on a tour so that you can see what I see from my desk. I'll be back in just one second. Well, now you're sitting in my chair. You can get an idea of what it's like for me. And I talked about having convenience. So I've got my palette there right next by. I've got a drawer with lots of different gadgets, my extra tubes of paint and so forth, large porcelain palette. Have a couple of extra buckets of water so you don't have to leave and get clean water. Tissues close by, lots of spray bottles, and that drawer behind me, I have a lot of extra spray bottles as well. Right next to me, I said I have north light. And so this north light, and my view is on a second floor, my upstairs of the house, looking out at part of the deck there. So part of it is that view, but also I have good north light coming into the studio to illuminate everything with good particular lighting. Lots of extra brushes and everything, so that if I have an extra uh, need for trying a different brush or a smaller brush, or just a larger brush, extra ones there, trying out new ones all the time. Photos around you. Put some things that are going to put you in a good mood. So there's some family vacation shots and so forth. And I talked about the view. So now and then I just sit back and take a look outdoors. I like that upstairs view, looking out in my backyard and the pond in the backyard. So it just might be inspiring. It's an encouraging place to have me to want to sit here. And that's the idea that I wanted to have suggestion for you. I have another painting. So I'm doing a cafe scene and I grabbed another cafe that I've done recently so I'm looking at one that I've done before and I'm learning from some of the good parts and I'm learning from some of the bad parts even so the painting I'm working on is able to have 
a similarity. And so a comfortable chair if I want to sit and review some sketches and books and there I was in the office uh, just a minute or two ago. So this will give you an idea of what it's like sitting in my studio being, being me for a minute. So comfort, convenience, good lighting, and accessibility will encourage me to finish this painting. Here's another idea for you. Post-it notes. Believe it or not, these are lifesavers. Jot down an idea. If you've got that idea, jot it down, whether it be an office idea or a painting idea. Then it's taken care of. You won't forget it. You're clear and you're ready to go back to painting. And that's what I wanted this segment to be in helpful for you. To get you to want to go in the studio. To help the end result of the painting. Or just to learn something that a layout that just might improve the process. Only at Art Academy Live am I going to take you in the studio with my artist friends. So be on alert for some new programming along with some of the existing good ones. See you on a live broadcast. I'm going to go back and finish this painting. Hey, thanks for watching me at Art Academy Live. Bye for now. Bye for now.